You've landed on planet 412. I'll be your captain of sorts as we navigate this strange, cryptid-filled world. Join me on the quest for truth through the strange, mysterious, and supernatural. This is Planet 412. Welcome to Planet 412. I'm your host, Matt Amsch. This is the place where you get your paranormal fix of cryptid, supernatural, paranormal, UFO, you call it, you'll get it here. We're doing an interview tonight, a little bit of a different format, going to become more regular. I uh, first just wanted to tell everyone how happy I am to be here. Um, you know, it's it's been pretty wild lately, but we have a really amazing uh, show for you tonight. Uh, we have Joe Barger, which is, you know, someone that has had one of the most incredible dogman experiences on the planet. Um, somebody that I'm getting to know, and I call him and his wife, Jenny, friend. Um, you know, he's going to tell us about what happened to him. Without further ado, we're going to bring Joe Barger in. Joe, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for being here. It's an honor. I've uh, been waiting to have you on, and uh, you know, I look forward to speaking with you today. Yeah, same here. Same here, Mary. So, you know, you and I have both had, uh, you know, experiences happen to us that has really changed our lives, and, um, you know, it's hard to really put a finger on how much it's, it's done things to us. But you had something occur. Uh, which really has been one of the most notable experiences in the world. And, uh, you know, if you could just do me a favor when we bring you in, just introduce yourself, you let everybody know who you are and uh, what you do, and we can jump into the interview. Uh, sure. Um, I'm Joe Barger, uh, average truck driver. Nothing, uh, nothing more than that. For the last uh, 12 or 13 years, I'm going to be 14 now, driving truck. And uh, my background is a little bit of military when I was younger, and just a little bit of everything. I've uh, done several um, job descriptions and, and uh, in my life, uh, a lot of different. Uh, career changes, but uh, what really changed my life, I think, um, has some good, some good come out of it, some, some not so good, but overall, I think this um, encounter I had did, did improve a lot of things just by surviving it and, and, you know, getting them to tell people about what, what actually happened and some important information that uh, um, isn't just unique to me, but as a survivor um, of, of, a, of an attack that, sorry about that noise out here, we got a truck backing up. Um, but anyway, um, so I guess uh, in short, that's kind of where I where I'm at now is driving truck, and uh, I'm in a truck right now. Actually, I just uh, part of the night, but um, I can get into my encounter and and uh, a little bit and go from there. And, you know, yeah, I, again, I just I wanted to say thank you. you know, you're on the road, like you said. Um, so, you know, I don't want to interrupt anymore, but I just wanted to, again, thank you and tell you what an honor this is to have you on. And I know everybody's excited to hear your account. So, again, I'm just going to turn it on over to you, sir. Okay. Well, this, this uh, encounter I had um, occurred in 2017 in June. I was driving a truck at the time uh, for a different company. I'm currently with, and I was picking up a load of paper in, uh, uh, in, near the Manistee National Forest, uh, up near, uh, I think close to 
biggest town is would be uh, Traverse City, I guess. And as I was, as I picked that load up and as I was bringing it back to the terminal that, that we had, had down in, in Michigan, in the lower part of Michigan, I was coming to, uh, I was I started to look at my gauges and noticed my air was leaking in my uh, air supply from my trailer. And, and from my trailer, it was leaking, I found out. But I stopped to look at what was going on, and I, 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 I found the leak, and I didn't want to wait on service. I'm, I'm in this, I'm in this uh, pretty secluded area. It's, 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 it's a main road, but it's not really highly traveled. It's just a, it's more of a, of a, uh, up in that part of Michigan, it's it's kind of more vacation homes and small towns and, you know, hunting cabins and things like that. Um, and uh, when I stopped, to, I, t I found a little spot on the side of the road, which I knew this area kind of well. I've done this route and this load before. I stopped, turned, turned on turned around I, I made a u-turn to to uh pull into this like turn around for snow plows or something i it had to do that i had to do that the way it's all configured there so i, I did that i so i was facing the other direction and i and i think that's one detail that i i miss on some of these when i uh, did times so i explained this this encounter, but and, you know, and this I think has some plays into it a little bit to speculation, but uh, I think it plays into a little bit of why I might have survived too. Uh, but uh, uh, as as I was underneath the trailer, I noticed there was uh, sounds. The atmosphere didn't seem right. I felt weird. Uh, some kind of i don't want to say it was electricity but i would say it was more of a seemed like an echo chamber or that not really would not really with an echo maybe a vacuum i don't know but atmosphere was getting weird and hair was standing up standing up on end you know like on the on your neck and things it's just i was really creeped out and i saw and heard really weird noises made in the woods and that was seeing shadows in the bushes maybe 30 40 feet away um really dense thrush and trees right at that part and that was underneath the trailer and uh and i did fix it it took me a few five five minutes it was easy to fix um, I, I just had a few things with me that i could do that with you know man it was a temporary repair but it would it got me home. I it, the, the air pressure held, and, and uh, I just started taking off. I as I was taking off, I did another U-turn because I was now I was heading the wrong way. But I, I made a U-turn again to head back to where I was going. So as I straightened out, got going, was going up the hill, making sure there was no there was no. Uh, traffic or any cars coming so because i i was at the bottom of a hill too and it's a steep grade right there and i was loaded heavy and going slow you know it's until you get to the top you, you, can, you can't go any more than 25 maybe 30 at the most uh, and as it was going i was looking on my left on the traffic side and you know, i was all clear and I looked over, suddenly looked over, noted it just felt a dark presence on my right, on my passenger side. My windows are both are down. It's June. It's a nice day. It's it's like 7.30 at night. So it's broad daylight still. And uh, and this this wolf, huge wolf head is is peering down inside my window from the other side of my my passenger side mirror running along with me 
Yeah, I couldn't go any faster. I was about 25, maybe 30 at the most, and I couldn't go any faster. This was a long grade up a hill, and uh, and he and and this and he was black. He was jet black. He was he was actually leaning over down to look in, and I was in a I was in a regular cab. No, I wasn't in a. Uh, sleeper cab at the time. Is that I was in a, a, a day cab, they called it, and uh, and I could see the blackness through the windows. So he was filling up everything. It was just huge, and his head was so big. He, I bet he barely could, I think, could fit his head through the window if he wanted to put it. He was sticking his hands in the window uh, a little bit, pulling it back. He was grabbing at my door handle. I. And my doors were locked, but I was freaking out and I was trying to hit my door locks in the, but they were already locked, but my windows were down. And he was trying to pull my handle and there was just some scratches on the door after that. And a little bit of the rubber on the top was was scratched and uh and he you know, he was looking at me with the, these intense he wasn't an animal. It didn't look like an animal. It just would have had this intense look in his eyes. And they, he did look animal, but he didn't look human. He, he, I, I'm, I say he, I don't know, but I'm, I'm just assuming that it's a he. And, uh, and, and he, I don't know. I, well, a million things went through my mind, but I always, at that time, I always have a gun on me, always a some sort uh, have carried for many years and in the truck i had a gun and i mounted on my seat at that time and it was a smith and west governor loaded with uh with 45 cold it's a revolver that that you can load with 410 or 45 cold long cold they call it and i had a special rounds that i special ordered that are solid copper called maximum expansion bullets from the high defense. I pulled that gun when I had this feeling that it was going to get to me and I was about ready to get get torn apart or something. I didn't know, but it wasn't good. And it wasn't, you know, um, giving me any, any feeling that he was not going to go away. And he gave me this this thought in my head, I was feeling it. I, they, you know, people talk about mind speak and, and uh, telepathy and things. I don't know if that's what it was, but I felt like he was saying, I'm going to get at you. There's nothing you can do about it. There's, you, there's nothing you can do. I got you. And, and as soon as that thought came in my head, that gun came to my thought. Uh, and I grabbed it. I pulled it, pulled it fast. And, and shot twice very fast within a, a fraction of a second that will happen. And uh, right, in, right into his head. And I'm sure one of those bullets caught his eye. Maybe both of them did. I don't know. But he, when the, when the, those, those shots went off, he he went down like he hit a clothesline. You know, just he was down instantly. And. Uh, and as he, because he was running, he was he was running fluid. It was he had a very fluid motion to him. His the, he was jet black, and his teeth were white. His his eyes were dark. It was a bright amber yellow, and uh, and uh, and his teeth his teeth like I said, and he looked very groomed. His, Groomed, very well groomed, like he was kept or, or taken care of somehow. He didn't look like he's mangy or dirty or anything. His fur had like white or translucent tips if the sun hit it a certain way as his fur was moving. He had a huge mane too. Like it looked like almost like he had a cape, but if you think of a lion's mane, he had a foot. His mane was, mane was dark black too, just like the rest of and uh, and as I was as that happened when when he fell and he was slight 
and I could tell that I I, I had a good um, you know lethal hit on him because when you I've hunted and I've I've done that, um, quite a bit of hunting in my life, and I know when you hit an animal in the brain, I know what that looks like, and that's what that looked like, and his his extremities were stiffened out to straight, and um, and he, he he wasn't he wasn't even uh, trying to get up move, other than he was just straightened out, he was just stiffened out. And he was sliding and he rolled a little bit. And I could, as he was pushing the weeds over on the side, he looked as, as huge as, as maybe a cow or a horse, um, only a werewolf. And, uh, and he was, uh, by, by this time, by the time he stopped, I was getting a little bit far away, further away up the hill. And I could tell he had a tail. His legs were, his leg, he had hands like raccoons and his nails were black too, or his, his like claws more than nails. Uh, they, they were black, probably three, three inches long, probably at least. Uh, and uh, I would, I would guesstimate, I, I'm estimating he had to be at least 10, 10 and a half tall because he had to look down and I'm at nine feet in the truck and he was looking down in on me and um, and I, I would say it, it, I know what the you know size of a horse or maybe a cow about that looks about that size what they would weigh and so it would be in the neighborhood of a thousand pounds so that's what i was seeing as i was looking in the mirror and there was dust kicked up and and you know mowing the weeds down as he was sliding um and and um, and then uh, i i thought well i'm gonna turn i didn't know what I, was going on i thought it was in the twilight zone i thought I thought I lost my mind. I didn't. I had never heard of a dog man. I didn't know what it was. I've heard of Bigfoot. It's actually, another story. But I've actually seen a Bigfoot before, and my grandfather has. And so that wasn't. That wouldn't have been a much of a surprise to me. But I've never heard of a dog man. And uh, and uh, I I just I, you know it was a werewolf to me at the time. I'm like, well, that's whatever's going on. I want to make sure what happened just happened. I turn around. My ears are ringing like you couldn't believe because you can just imagine that 45 going off in a little small cab like that. And so I had that going on and, and just all this confusion, you know, kind of. I, I don't know if it was not really fear because I had a lot of different emotions happening at the same time, but I thought I need to turn around if I can, I need to turn around, make sure I'm not crazy. And if that thing's still laying there, I'm gonna run it over with this truck and that will make, I'll make sure that thing is, is dead. And I care if it messes the truck up, you know, that's that wasn't even uh, relevant if that happened. If, if I messed up the truck or not, I just want to make sure if that happened, that thing is dead because I can't let that thing um, get up and maybe get somebody else or whatever. So, like about as I at the top of the hill, I do I do remember there was a picnic turnaround where people would go go off and you know um, have picnic picnic tables there and people go there to. You know, stop or rest or whatever. This is it's up in the national forest, so there's a lot of tourism, and you know, and this this time of year especially, but all, all year round, there's winter things too. You know, but um, anyway, I turned around there. I, I barely was able to turn around. Truck still. This isn't made for a semi to turn around, so I knocked a few branches down off of trees and stuff that, but. 
uh, you know, I wasn't thinking about that. I was looking at branches that small enough. I can knock that away. So I, I got, I did turn around. It was big enough for me to get back turned around. And as I was coming back down that, that hill where I had just shot that werewolf, there was a, a jeep, a black jeep right there where it was at. And I was, I couldn't figure out what's going on. There's two people outside of the jeep and they were kind of milling around that area. And you could see where that all had occurred. It was, weeds were down and, and just all disturbed right in that area. And, and, and that thing was gone. And I'm like, man, that thing, got got up somehow i don't know how because i know i killed it i don't know how it got up um, and i'm but i i saw these people there and i was starting to get concerned about them because if this thing got is wounded and dragged itself out of sight it could come out and kill these people and or something and, um so i stopped across the road i just i stopped Put my four ways on and I asked him, you, you guys, you didn't help me. What, and I was concerned about them. I wasn't thinking anything other than that at this point. And they're, they're like looking at me like, what are you stopping here? What are you stopping for? And asking us any questions. Uh, you know, they just had this, you know, standoffish um, attitude. And I'm like, hey, I'm just, you look like you might need help or you got a phone call i don't know you might need something and, and they're they're like no we're good we just thought we saw you know a couple of bears uh wrestling fighting right here on the side we thought we'd check it out and, and we're good so i said all right all right and then and as i was looking over in that jeep too i saw it from my vantage point the truck across the, the road i could see there's a shotgun in the back of that uh, you know, so it was ready to grab. And uh, and as I was taken off, I, I did, I, I just, I did, I, I wasn't really expecting them to be, come to find out later, they were handlers, the biggest thing. That, that was, uh, you know, but at the time I didn't know that. And I, I do remember seeing a white plate, which is usually, uh, that's not a Michigan plate, that's usually a good so I thought it, I didn't think nothing of it at the time, but uh, so that's you know I guess that's that kind of kind of state of mind. Yeah, yeah. Took, a few months to really get myself together. I went through life like that. I didn't know anybody, no one, no one, no one or least in here. Then, then when, when I did, I only. I only mentioned it to one person in the cryptic community. And uh, and then it that set off a whole other chain of events after I did that. It wasn't even my voice. I was narrated, it was narrated for me. He took my account, he narrated it, and he did a, a he did a perfect job at at it too with his notes that he took and uh, and it was maybe not more than a month later, I get pulled into a scale house in Indiana and the state police are holding me there, uh, DOT is for um, federal agents to come and talk to me. They were instructed to do that when I come through. So I didn't know what I, I had no idea what was going on. I thought it, had, it was related to truck, you know, no, nope, wasn't related to trucking at all. Uh, and when they got there, it, and they got they they didn't get there right away, but they got there in about an hour. I think they were so they had to be pretty close by. And because um, when I was sitting there and I started to walk in, I thought they wanted to do an inspection on me, and they said no. Nope, we're holding you here for federal authorities. Okay, uh, I don't know what it could be, but when they showed up, they just were, they, they were started the intimidating factor right off the bat. Um, 
just to throw me off, you know, uh, get me off balance. And, uh, and you know, uh, I guess just to, um, just to make me feel like there, that there's no, there's no way that I can, uh, I can protect myself from these people. Um, there's so many things that were said and, and threats that were made. They followed through on some, but uh, uh, after that, because um, they did do a few things like uh, they put they put a uh, a tracker on the car. They put a, a they shut down my bank account for a minute. I got that turned back on. I found that tracker on my car only because somebody working on, on the car saw it and said, do, do, do you know what this is? It was very small. It was like an, it was like an inch. I, I didn't know what it was, but um, he said it looks like some electronic tracker and and I don't, I don't know, but uh, I don't even know. This was several years ago. I mean, I don't even think I have it or anything. But um, it was very small and very thin. It was probably like an inch by an inch by an inch square, and maybe a quarter inch thick. Um, and it was just black and. Uh, and it was magnetized uh, and uh, let's see and then uh, then I started talking about it a lot more after I, I, I didn't say they, that worked for a while I didn't really say anything anymore about it for another four years or something at all I went to a conference about um that involves these topics, especially dogmen. And, and that's where I met a lot of people face to face that are new from, um, and, you know, trying to figure out what these things are and what happened to me. And I, I thought I'd learn more going to this. I, and when I went there, I people asked me things and I, and and they, I was asked if I had a counter. They said, yeah. And then I tell them, and they were like, oh, man, dude, that's crazy. You know, I didn't really, I wasn't there to do that. I was there to learn. But as that happened, I got to know a lot of people. And a lot of people, um, and, you know, just encouraged me to, and, and they were right, you know, uh, encouraged me to get it out. Because the details and a lot of things, like, one of the main reasons I came out about I was hearing at that time, at least, these people were shooting at these things, and no, they know what they weren't killing them or really affecting them that much. And uh, I put one down instantly with the right shot. Maybe copper has something to do with it too, because I do think that, in my opinion, I think these things are are from you know uh, the Bible, what they call nothing. I think that's where they originate from, from everything I've learned about these things. And uh, and we're, and we are a government, military, whatever they're doing with them, where they are, they are um, making them super soldiers or doing something to, well, I know what, what they told me when they did try to intimidate me, um, going back to that, what they told me was, uh, I, you know, I was I was holding my own. I was getting back on to in their face. I told them, you know, keep the dog on a leash. I was I wasn't trying to let them intimidate me like that because I when I realized what they were there for, you know, uh, I was I was trying to hold my own against these the intimidation. So, but you know, he he did say, you know, we can. We can make it look like you can fail a drug test. There's all kinds of things that, you know, so I couldn't keep a job. If you don't, if you don't keep quiet about this, you know, don't talk about it anymore. And, uh, well, anyway, I did for a long time. It, I guess that worked to an extent. But when I started talking about it again after that, 
after that uh, conference. Um, um, I guess they backed off and I and they decided to give me a message one more time. And uh, they had, at, well, when they, they took one of my guns that I had in the truck, when they took my phone and, uh, and they took a rifle that I had in the back of my truck. And I, did, I had a pistol on me too, but I hid that well enough they couldn't find it. I did, they, but they took my rifle and uh, I, and the, after I started talking about it, it wasn't, I don't know, a few months after that. And I started, and my story started going up. I oh, hope, um, you know, a lot of people were starting to hear about it. I got, I, I, I got it uh, in, in my truck, in the back of my pickup truck one day after I had parked it for a weekend. And, um, I go on the back to him, you know, put some things in there or something. And it, I have a hard tunnel cover on it. And um, there's a big box in there. And I was like, where's a uh, cardboard box? Like, it looked like a picture frame package, maybe. And it's taped up and everything. And I and I look in there and open it up. And it's and that's my rifle. My rifle, they gave it back to me, whatever reason. Because I asked them, I said, how, they, how can I get it back? They said, well, you know, uh, we'll, we'll let you know, you know, um, and something to that effect. Um, you, you might not get it back, but, you know, if, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm like, what am I going to do about that? But they did tell me while I was in this exchange with them, verbal exchange, that they said it's a matter of homeland security. So, um, that's all we need to tell you. And they showed me some credentials. I said, well, let me see how old you people are. You know, I know, I know somehow you've got some authority that, you know, you got the state police all over here. You know, and and I, I don't know what I'm looking at. It could have been anything, but, you know. So anyway, I got my gun back and uh, I had that dealt with. I had a, it just in case they wanted to connect me with that on a crime or anything, I had that dealt with, so that couldn't happen. Just when they were reiterating, you killed our asset, when they, the first, when they first came up to me, and, and he, what I do is, you killed our asset, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's what I did, okay. The only thing I killed was the, that dog man, and these people, come to find out, are, are people that have to do with intimidating witnesses or whatever they do and um, and so but i do know that they told me it was a killing at their asset for that is involved in homeland security for some reason so that's where that's kind of where we're at on that um and you know there's a lot to it there's a lot of, there might be some things I left out or forgot or whatever, but um, you know, that's pretty much it, I think. Thank you. Uh, well, first, you know, Joe, I, I, I just want to thank you again, you know, myself and for, for everybody watching. You know, when I, when you were talking about what this thing looked like, you couldn't see me, but just to let you know, you know, I was, I had my hands over my face and I, I heard so many similarities to what I saw when I was 14. Um, yeah. You know, anybody that has not heard my experience, you know, when Joe was talking about first and foremost, jet black, um, one of the things that really drew my attention besides the eyes, glowing amber colored eyes, exact same thing that I saw um, drew me as well. Uh, you know, yeah. we, we had went back to the steel mill to, to get a gauge of height of this thing. And we had figured out tips of the ears. It was probably around 11 and a half, 12 feet tall. So from the, the top of the head, 10 and a half, 11 feet tall, same exact height that you discussed. Yeah, um, and it, was, then, it was huge. And just, then the hair, uh, you yeah. said, again, just mirror images of each other, short, kempt, 
almost yeah. groomed yeah. queen, a beautiful, actually beautiful looking yeah. animal you really look yeah. at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It blew my mind. So yeah, it wasn't scenes. it wasn't so scary looking. It was it would it would have been beautiful. It wasn't so scary and right, right. And, and, you know, but yeah, a perfect specimen of whatever that thing is. But I like I said I do believe it's 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 from it's it's derived from you know the Nephilim and the fallen angels and all that. I that's my that's where my take on it. I don't I know everybody thinks but from what i can gather that does seem to ring true to me well you know with with what happened to to me and my three friends is we saw multiple things that happened that were not of any normal type of creature on this planet there were signs of supernatural happenings the eyes uh, the arm blinked out near the fire. The fire reached out towards its arm. There was something that went on there. Uh, this thing uh, was able to, to to almost turn into a shadow when it left the building. You know, it, it did multiple things that led us also to believe that there's something different going on. I've had there's people reach out, uh, hellhound, demon. Uh, I, you know, I'm along the lines of you, Joe. There's, yeah, there's something I, I remember your story. I've listened to your story uh, several times because it's so it's, it, it's so similar to mine in many ways too. But I, I, you know, like you said, you know, you you remember seeing it um, urinating and like a lot, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's a nor that's a regular animal does that. Mm -hmm. But then it was doing other things, you know, that were not natural too. So. And then what I was seeing was it was natural, but it the way it moved seemed unnatural. You know, it, it's so fluid, and I, I didn't hear its footsteps on the you know as it was running. Maybe that was my perceptions not hearing it, but I don't remember hearing it like its feet hitting the ground. You know, as it was keeping up with me, and, and just the, the the atmosphere around me. When I was outside the truck under the trailer, there was everything was just there was a supernatural component to it, to you know besides that. So, you you felt you felt different. Something yeah, was in yeah. the air. It, yeah, it, it, right. And I'm Let sure just, you did too. I, I wanted to ask you um, when you went back and and you saw that there were you know, these, these handlers there, which, you know, you've heard, I've heard other experiences where people have spoke about, you know, some of these things, the government has control over some of them. I don't think they have control over them all. Um, yeah. But, you know, you hear that term being used, handler asset, which obviously tells you government is utilizing these perfect predators for you know, whatever reason, be it war, nefarious, get get assassinations taken care of. But, you know, it really draws the attention. Why? Why? Number one, why was it near you? It blows the mind thinking it's running alongside of a truck going 35 miles per hour. Um, but yeah. that size, what you spoke of about the size, that's like I have goosebumps thinking about it because one of the hardest parts for me dealing with that event was just the sheer size of that animal was just yeah. you can't wrap your head around it yeah like you said you said cartoonish almost and that that that's a great description of what how i would say it's so big it's 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 stupid i guess you know but i, I, I don't even know what other thing to say about it it's just so big i don't even know seem like it could be real real fake yeah well the, the, and for anybody that that's watching right now imagine just your car you know your car door like joe had said the head would have trouble fitting through a window that that's another perfect description of about the size of the head of what we saw it just yeah. Yeah. you just can't wrap your head around how big something can be like that until you physically see it yourself 
And, you know, Joe, I mean, like, what what has that done to you internally over the years since that's occurred? You know, how did it how did it change your perception of like the world in general? Well, it, it really flipped everything on its head. It really did. Everything that I thought I knew of the world just I had to let go. I had to let go and it put me on a different path of learning and uh, and a good one you know it actually I, I think i've actually learned more since then than i did my whole life prior mm -hmm. when it comes to what the world is what um what it is in the spiritual realm and, and in the world in general in the natural realm and the spirit you know spiritually with uh god and jesus too uh, well that's all interwoven into everything Absolutely. that if you really look dig deep and dive into it i went to church half most of my life and i i they they, they, they gloss over the, the you know the just the feel good stuff you know they don't dig deep and really you got to do that yourself you're not going to get it in a church you know no, um, this information that that is more important than than um, you can imagine, uh, because this is a you know like a guidepost to your life uh, and how you should conduct yourself and and decision make decisions, especially when you go in the woods to know that these things or anywhere actually are out there and if you, you should anybody that's willing to listen should take you know notice of this and be armed or you know be armed in the armor of god too besides mm -hmm. a flare and things like that because i was uh, gonna ask you how how has it changed you in general of just your everyday life but you just basically answered my question for me um do you notice just you know in general no matter what you're doing are you more you know, uh, cognizant of, of everything around you since this has occurred? Yeah, I have a totally different worldview ever since this has occurred. And um, and I, I do believe that um, the more I learn, the, the easier it is for me to, to um, deal with adversity since this you know um i've been able to deal with adversity pretty well but i've been able to deal with it even a lot better it, it, not at first of course but it, it took a minute for me to get my composure back to my normal self and and um i was kind of a mess for a little bit i i did have nightmares for a good while you know i still do to some degree but they're uh, probably, I don't really even remember them if I do have them, but I guess I still do is what Jenny tells me, you know, she knows me awake, and, you know, out of a, you know, a nightmare, but uh, it's not very often anymore. So I'm, I'm healing out pretty good, you know, it's through the grace of God, everything too. So I think he helped save me that day too, by my choice of, weapon and my choice of cartridge and a lot of reasons i didn't know why i had it but i think copper is poison to nephilim too so i agree uh, so, you know you you brought up your wife uh, uh jenny how how did she react when you told her about this um well she she well she uh, uh, believed it right away and she couldn't wait to, for me to get it out to everybody that I could get it out to. It's just talk about it. Um, so I wasn't with her at the time when this happened, though. Oh, but, okay. But um, but when I met her, I met her at that Dogman conference. That's when I met her. And she okay. believed me right away. And uh, and so that's when I, that's actually what actually launched on um, my, she encouraged it a, a ton, you know, and, and she, and, and she was right, you know, it, 
I, I did need to talk about it. It helped me um, psychologically to get it out there because I, I, I do believe it's important. I, I, and if any, anything I says even saves one person from getting killed from one of these things, um, that that made it worth it to me. So, uh, you know, I'm not here to, you know, I, I'm I'm not out here talking about it to. Uh, convince anybody you know that's I, I don't care if they believe it or they don't it's right. uh it's it's just uh if one person listens and it, and it helps them to stay alive during one of these encounters then i i do believe that's why i'm doing this so there's the only reason i'm talking about it and and it's teaching people that want to know more more information about it that researchers and things it's more information for them to to uh teach other people so you know it's people teaching other people you know i i couldn't agree with but, you more you know i i met jenny uh, at the conference at josh turner's second annual encrypted conference you and i didn't get to meet but you know what it, it, we were meant to, to meet eventually, uh, you know, you can't have something like this happen and the similarities between the two of us without us getting together here and discussing it. So, um, you know, it was meant for us to, to happen. You know, it was a pleasure meeting her. Um, and and yeah. I remember her speaking about you there. Uh, I was yeah. sitting very close to her, so. Yeah, I was a, I'm glad I met her at the first one the year prior because it's changed my life and, uh, in so many ways. Can't even explain it, but uh, yeah. Well, you have definitely done what, what you've said. You, you know, one of the things that's been really important to me, the effect, the people that have reached out that said they were gonna take their, their experiences to the grave um, because they heard, heard what happened to me. And, and I guarantee just with you as well, you know, it, it just takes a, you know one or two of us to just step out there and, and tell tell the truth. I mean that that's all we're doing is saying what happened here. Um, you know that's yeah. that's another reason why I'm drawn with you specifically, Joe, because I mean the the similarities between what we both saw are are almost identical. Um, yeah. yeah, you know I applaud you for doing it, brother, and and you were saved that night as well. I believe that. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I, I do believe it wasn't just my my skills and my actions. I believe I I things happened in a in a divine way that put, put everything in my favor. You know, I I do believe that too. So it was me, but I had a lot of help, divine help, I think, at the same time. I agree. You know, when you got back to uh the 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 scene where you had last seen it. You had mentioned how those guys were there, but the animal wasn't there, right? You, right, you didn't. right. Now, well, what, what what do you think happened with that? Well, there there's a few um, things we've speculated, and other people have speculated on. I believe there was two or three at least there, and they I didn't it see any other. Ones. But I believe they mentioned the the bears fighting, I think they thought if I saw anything, they would just just cast it off to me like it was bears. You know, you saw bears. That's why they mentioned bears because mm -hmm. they, they didn't know if I'd seen anything or not, you know, I guess at that time. So I think that was their response is it was usually is when they're trying to cover anything up. They try to get people to that's witness these to say it's bears or you know bears. Gonna... yeah it was sasquatch too yeah right yeah well, makes so... sense. i mean a person's not going to be able to move that thing uh, no that's no for sure no it'd have to be another one or two of those to drag it off because you could see where it had been dragged off into the deep brush and bushes and where you couldn't see anything anymore there it was all knocked down you know um at least out of sight um, and and I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's. I think because I did a U-turn because these things hunt hunt packs. I think they have their own job. 
if I did a, I flipped a script on him by doing another U-turn, and now it's like, okay, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm, I'm supposed to be over there. You know what I mean? I'm supposed to be over there. And now he, my, my hunting buddy's over there, and they might have got a little confused because the, I think the one on my side, on on the drive on the passenger side, I believe this is speculation, but he was there to distract me from one from one that was coming up on my driver's side to grab me. I believe that's what I I really think so. That's but I I messed him up, you know. I messed him up because they now they had to s switch what they were doing, I guess, and re and and to readjust like they did, I guess, gave me, put them off their footing enough to where, I don't think they, the thing is, is when you have a strategy and it doesn't go exactly as planned, it, 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 you get it, sometimes it takes you a second to readjust. Mm. Now, I was in the military, you know, and things happen when you've got those tactics and got, you practice things that are supposed to go like clockwork and if it doesn't, everybody's got to reevaluate and reach, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and I mean, it can be done, but it, it takes a second, you know. Makes perfect sense. And, and again, I, no person is going to move that. So there had to be something else there to be able to, to that, pull that thing off the road. So that's right. I, I mean, it's it, there, there's no other explanation I can think of because it would land there in plain sight. When it stopped rolling and, and sliding, it was it was just a big, huge black lump, just motionless. So, um, unless it, it was well, that special ammo, was the reason that you put it down? I think because I hit it in the eye and and that ammo too. Because the, be, even though it's it is solid copper, which you know I think that in itself can do a lot of damage to these type of creatures but it also when it hits it's a really long bullet and it's milled and it's got a cross cut of an x in it and it's a really deep hollow point it's the bullet is probably two inches long bullet just the bullet not mm -hmm. not the cartridge so and and when that when and that hollow point is probably at least three quarters of an inch deep mm -hmm. at least and when that opens up it opens up like a fan blade like an x and it opens up it opens up to two inches wide two inches wide and that's like a, a blender blade going through your eye and your brain i mean a big one you know it would yeah, just it would, it would turn your brain to mush you know it would, it's just mush your brain and it's something like that just going through there and just just like a blender, like a broadhead, you know, like a, it's, 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 it's nasty. It's a nasty book round. I didn't have it to shoot a, a, a werewolf. I just had the most lethal round in that gun if I need to use it. That's why I had it. For protection. It's yeah. just for protection, you know, and, and, you know, God, you usually, had it, yeah, yeah, I had it. Actually, it was, it's overkill, maybe if people want to call it that for a human, but it did the, what it did the job. It was I needed it for when, even though I didn't know I needed it for that, it worked and it worked like a charm. So, well, I, I'm glad it did. I, I'm glad you're here, and you know, I, again, I just want to thank you, you know, for for coming on the show. It I, you know, it's it's been a long time coming. It's an honor for me to to finally, you know, get to sit down with you and talk to you and compare notes. And, you know, I, I think this really needs to, you know, marinate in some people, you guys that are watching this, you need to, to really listen to the fact that number one, try and grasp that these things really exist. Number two, what Joe brought here is the fact that really should, you know, if we sit down and think deep about this, bother us, you know, emotionally and and the fact that our government has control over some of these things and that they're using these 
they have handlers, they're, you know, they're their assets. You know, these words are military uh, uses that, that you know, Joe. So, um, you know, I, I just would like to know how long they've had these things and, and uh, you know, where they come from exactly. But, you know, I'm on with you. Uh, definitely some type of connection, um, either religiously, satanically, demonic, uh, the Nephilim, anything is possible. I think that's all, all in there. All of that sure. is in there. Well, you thank know, you, Joe. I think, yeah. You're welcome, I, I, man. It's yeah, my pleasure. Man. It's been a great, great uh, to get to hear you and, and, you know, get to see your wife again. And, you know, I want to tell you, you know, to tell her thank you for getting you to open up. Uh, you know, it must have been difficult for you to to go and against I, that. Oh, it, it almost worked. I probably, I might not have ever really talked about it if it wasn't for going to that first conference and meeting Jenny. I, I, I don't know, but. I, I know she encouraged me, you know, more than anybody could have. So I, I, I you know, so I'm grateful for that because it's really helped me and others out, I'm sure, immensely too. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, again, I want to thank you for being here and uh, thank you from, you know, everybody watching, um, you know, one more time, everybody, if you could, you know, just please, you know, hit that uh, subscribe button and then the notification bell and, and like the video, you know, I appreciate it. Um, I always say this now, you don't hear it very often for people that do creating of videos on YouTube, uh, watching the video all the way through really helps anybody that makes it. So if you don't want to watch the end of it, just, you know, let it play and walk away, you know, you know that helps us. Um, again, Joe, thanks for being here, brother. And everybody wearing this shirt here, this dog man shirt, I'll have a link on it. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. It was something I found. It kind of grabbed my attention a little bit, and it's kind of a cool shirt. But, Joe, you know, you're on the road. I, I wish you nothing but the best. Tell your wife I said hello, and, and thank you for getting you here. And be safe, brother. You too. You too. Thank you for um Given me the opportunity, Matt, to put it out there again. Thank you, Thanks. sir. All right. Well, you have a good night, everybody. Thank you. It was a great time. And uh, thank you for being here at Planet 412. We'll see you later, everybody.